Hi, it's another episode of Loudness War, your host Warmonger. The latest video featuring Toybox was by far the most popular to date, so I decided to record some more sound design tips. This time I will share my techniques for good hi-hats. So, how many times did you use closed hi-hats in your production? Well, I do it every time, always start with 4 4 drum machine loop. 808, 909, 606, and then countless clones and emulations, they just do their job right. But often these are sample instruments with only a single sample repeating over and over, which as a result creates this terrible machine gun effect. So the task for today is how to avoid this kind of sound. So here we are with a very simple drum loop from Battery 4 from Native Instruments. There is a kick. Then the other instruments are routed to different tracks here. Snare. Open head. And close head. There is some other swing, but still it's very simple. To make things less boring, I added trans bass line like that. And that's it. But as you notice, the close head itself, it's just a single sample. It repeats over and over. And it's very boring. I mean, it's the same exact sound every time. One way to fix that is to add some distortion or noise. The heads, claps and crashes are often just a modulated noise anyway. So by adding more noise or distortion on top of that, we're not losing much quality. Let's start with fuse distortion, for example, the one found in Ableton Pedal. It's a very aggressive, but also a random type of distortion, not a clipping one. It adds this another layer of noise on top of sound, which luckily happens to sound very good. So let's try that. Let's start with volume compensation. and reduce dry wet control or maybe more so the sound is a bit different but also it's a bit random every time and that's what we wanted to achieve it's very subtle but things will get more interesting later on now modulated noise let's try Ableton Erosion Let's hear that. At certain frequency, it's at this modulation, which alters the sound a bit. Now we can modulate that with LFO, like this. I will map the frequency to a macro, and then map the LFO to frequency now it's pretty extreme let's reduce the tempo also in the upper range we can hear some weird distortions so let's reduce the range of modulation like that Let's add some jitter to LFO. So now we've got this random modulation. Full loop. This one. Compare with original hat. A little bit less boring, but you can, of course, dial much uh, more significant settings to make this effect more audible. Next, phaser and flanger. I'm going to add native instruments phases to add some uh, subtle movement to the sound. I've got my favorite preset for that. Drums. Cashmere Rights. 
Now let's add some stereo to this sound, like that. At 100% mix, it's very phasey. Let's dial in some subtle settings like this. And now the heads are subtly moving, but in a full mix, it's not very pronounced, it's just less boring. Now it sounds fine. I'll record this movement over 32 bars, let's stay with me. Phaser, all right. It's now ready to be placed in a full arrangement. After all this noise and distortion, make sure to remove unwanted components. Let's hear that. Or more like watch the spectrum. There is some low end which shouldn't be here and that was added by distortion. Let's remove that. Similarly, on the high end, there are products of aliasing which should be removed. So now our hats are clean again. Now you may be worried that after all this processing and distortion, our hats are a bit muffled and undefined. But there is a way around that, namely to use transient shaper to, well, reshape transients. So I picked this transient shaper from Neutron Free Package. It's bypass for now, let's hear. And for the mid range, I added a lot of attack and then reduced the level of sustain sound. When soloed, this may be not very audible, but in a full mix, you may notice that although we've got this aggressive bass, with Transient Shaper, hats cut better through the mix, which is important for our overall groove. It's subtle, but these little fixes contribute to overall quality of the mix. By the way, if you are using Ableton, you can try Drum Bass, which has pretty much all of that in one device. It has distortion, high-end control, as well as transient shaper. So it's one-stop station for all your needs when it comes to drums. Now the volume control. It is often good to make the first hat in a bar quieter than the second one, and you can achieve this with some volume modulation or velocity modulation by hand, but there is a better way to do that. Let's try Volume Shaper. Now let's make the first hat much quieter than the second one. Let's compensate for, for this lack of volume. Flat. Modulated. And now this effect is pretty extreme. But there is a nice way to tune that sound to fit perfectly with the groove of the track. Just change the mix. So it becomes less subtle. No mix, full mix. Some around here is good and it grooves perfectly with the track. And it's much more efficient to me than just doing the same by drawing automation, volume or velocities. So, you can try this trick. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. 
If you want to see more videos like this, hit like and subscribe. Cheers!